Did you know that some people have become millionaires by applying artificial intelligence to NFTs? Before you get too excited and go invest, remember, to keep making money, communities like these need people like us to believe that the generative art they produce is an investable asset. About this, I know that a pirate cat exists. What do you mean? Are these cats valuable? Of course they're valuable. Oh my gosh! Look at this one. Oh, cat tributes. Cat tributes. She only wants one ETH. That's anywhere from like one fiftieth to one fifty fifth of a Bitcoin. Five. Dude, I am in. That is a steal for this cat. Sell. Look at the hair. Five. Do you see that? So in this video, I just want to break down what generative AI art even is, how it's used to generate these NFT collections, and the impact that AI is having on artists in general. So no doubt, generative art and the thought of combining it with an NFT is fascinating from a technological point of view. Generative art is going to be one of the most popular art genres in the digital world. Dude, and honestly, even from a cultural point of view, I love the idea that these kind of communities are embedded in an open source and decentralized culture, which in theory should balance out from some of that massive wealth that the traditional art world has always kept to itself. And honestly, NFTs have been more transformational than I would have thought a couple years ago. Did you know that in 2021, non-fungible tokens or NFTs crossed the $41 billion mark? And what I take from that is that this is one of the most sought after markets in cryptocurrency. Last year, Christie's reported over 90 $93 million in non-fungible token sales during its fourth annual art and tech summit that took place this past August. And although that Christie's number is absolutely notable, the dominating force in the crypto art market has been cartoons and memes. Projects like the CryptoPunks and the Bored Ape Yacht Club have taken center stage. And although these projects are some of the most successful to date, a new subset of NFTs is emerging and it's based on new technology that's meant to mimic the human imagination. As technology evolves, it absorbs new characteristics and new techniques and starts evolving past its first iteration. And NFTs are no exception and I believe they're next in line for a complete AI makeover. And interest is rising from both artists and the tech enthusiasts, people who love blockchain and artificial intelligence and the upcoming metaverse. My rarest mm -hmm. moon cat is this one right here, it says Las Vegas. But these non-fungible tokens are different because they're generative NFTs. And they're different because instead of relying on a human to make the creative decisions, they rely on algorithms. For generative NFTs, Algorithms are a tool of design. Having an algorithm design an image in the past meant that a programmer actually needed to sit down and code. What are the constraints? What is it gonna randomize? And what are the inputs? For example, the programmer might write code that says first randomly pick a shape, then randomly pick a color, and then randomly put that somewhere on a canvas. And then whatever the computer comes up with would have been called generative art. And it's still called generative art, but AI puts a whole new spin on this. Artificial intelligence is upending the way that programmers work across the board. Because AI doesn't need programming, it needs guidance, it needs teaching, and it needs to learn. And the difference is that generative AI doesn't mind thinking outside of the box, just like the greatest artists who have ever lived. And just like those artists, it can learn from past experience. But if you thought I hit you with the punchline, I haven't yet, because now, we're gonna talk about a word that might be new to you, maybe you've heard this before, but it's called a GAN, a Generative Adversarial Network. So things become even more interesting when you take two artificial intelligence systems and you pit them head to head, because together they can make something even more creative than either of them could on their own. Like a teacher and a student, where one is creating art and the other is honing in their eye for discerning what good art is, and they go back and forth over time getting better and better and better. And in many of the newest generative AI NFT collections, that kind of interplay has created some remarkably creative results. 
So a GAN is constructed as a pair of neural networks, digital versions of the human brain, two of them out on the internet talking to one another. So the first one is kind of like the student. This digital brain has been fed lots of information about art, and it's basically inventing or dreaming up similar pieces of work that are unique, but they're based on all of the input that it's had in the past. Now the other one's more like the teacher. This is the discriminator. Now this neural network is getting fed information from the first one, and it's comparing it to the data that it knows is real from an outside source. So they've both seen real artwork. They've both been trained on real artwork, but one is generating and one is discriminating and they're working together. Like another way to put it is the discriminator is like an art judge. It's a brain that is very good at knowing what excellent art is. And when it gets something, it's got a discriminating taste. It's like, oh, I've seen that before. That's a Picasso. But that work you just gave me, not up to snuff. But if it is, then it gives you that feedback like, wow, you did it right. And then the other brain learns how to do it better. And because they're just digital computer brains out on the internet, they can do this, you know, millions or billions or even trillions of times, and they can hone in both of their skills until one is an excellent discriminator and one is an excellent generator. And at the point where the discriminator can't tell the difference anymore, the student, has become the teacher, and we have something that can make amazing artwork. Wealthy people have really ran the traditional art markets for a long time. They're, they're using it for something other than like enjoying art. I'm not exactly sure how to define that. Like to me, it seems more like a playground for the wealthy or like the Pokemon cards of rich people. And then like the people who decide what art is really valuable, the like experts, they just seem strange. Like they've learned all these rules to fit into that group, that that kind of mentality is exactly the opposite of what decentralized blockchains, DAOs, Web3, the open metaverse is really all about. So I like that NFT art can actually break down some of those barriers to entry, while also encouraging individuals to appreciate art more and also make art more often. And that's generally regardless of your financial, cultural, or social standing. And it's for those reasons that I say that it's great that anybody on the planet can buy an NFT, but only those who understand what they're buying should buy an NFT. And that's not most of us. So if you consider an artist to be anybody who can type text into a form, which I personally do, then you might be interested in checking out more from our sponsor, which is me, because we only have 533 subscribers right now. So if you wanna like click around on our YouTube channel or comment or anything, that would be super helpful. All right, now back to the video. The digital artist known as Cami was here stated that working with AI has profoundly changed the job of the human artist. The human needs the algorithm and the algorithm needs the human. For me, this new role meant data collection, writing code, curation, the inspiration to create a theme, and most of all, coaching an algorithm. The process is dynamic and the outcome collaborative. Another AI-based NFT producer painstakingly curates their collections. The point is there's a lot of human curation. If they think that the photos aren't worthy or they think that they need different types of groupings and different categories to put them in, a human is still doing very much what humans do and thinking about how it all should be laid out and presented. It's also worth noting that a lot of the software, the AI software that makes these generative NFTs can be tweaked and changed before even running it, which is in its own way, an act of creation. Like eating ice cream or pizza and choosing which toppings you wanna to put on them, it does make a difference. Because once the ball is rolling, it can grow and scale quite a bit faster than a lot of other types of art. And OpenSea has already had a massive influx of AI-based generative NFTs. And of course, NFTs being crypto also can have amazing other elements built into them as some of them are part of DAOs and some of them have other real world functionality. Additionally, the upcoming metaverse gives us all new ways to display these kind of NFTs and they don't always have to be flat two dimensional images. They can be full 3D objects. Also, unlike artwork, NFTs can also act as virtual identities. Artificial intelligence is already showing promise in turning photographs into full 3D avatars. So at the end of the day, NFTs encompass a whole lot more than any type of art. Generative, AI generative, or just straight up human made art. And so too does the use of artificial intelligence both in the sphere of NFTs and even more broadly in all of our society. Limitless meets limitless. When that comes together, I don't, I don't even know what you get.
super limitless. Also keep in mind that an NFT can encompass any kind of digital product. So it could be 2D flat art, it could be JPEG type things, it could be 3D art, but it can be code and it can be weights and biases, which is really the way you would represent a neural network. So you can actually have an NFT that is kind of a, a digital brain that actually could take inputs and process them into outputs in some ways, you know, approximating a function like neural networks do. And then you would have an NFT whose code is kind of immutable, meaning it can't change over time, but because it's a brain, it could process different things in ways that you couldn't predict. It's a bit of a black box. And then you kind of have something very meaningful locked into an NFT. I don't know, or, or you generate on top of that and it's like the first iteration and the NFTs go down the chain, but yeah, anyways, sorry. A lot of times with these videos, I just get overly excited and I, I, need, to, I need to focus in on that. So I, that must mean we're coming to the end. <laughs> And as promised, here's an image generated by the text prompt, quote, empathy, unquote. That's it, just empathy. You just said, generate empathy, as requested by the user Guillermo in the comment section of the last video. And if you have any thoughts about how the future of artificial intelligence and generative NFTs are going to collide, leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, keep generating great art. <laughs>